Hello everyone, what's up? This is me Mehdi Shakil and you are watching SS Tech Tutorial. So guys, today in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can host a local web server on your Raspberry Pi and can share it over the internet using the port forwarding on your router. In this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step guide how to do that. So further ado, let's get started. But before that, if you need to this channel, then please do subscribe this YouTube channel. And if you have already subscribed, then thank you so much. So guys, to host a website or a web server on your local Raspberry Pi, you need to set up a Raspberry Pi with an operating system. In this case, you can use Raspberry Pi official operating system on your Raspberry Pi board. I had already set up a Raspberry Pi like this. If you don't know how to set up or install Raspberry Pi operating system on a Raspberry Pi board and how to access that board using the SSH, then there is a dedicated playlist about Raspberry Pi. You can watch that playlist and learn how to set up or use a Raspberry Pi board for different type of DIY projects. So here is my Raspberry Pi board. This is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus model. And I had already installed the operating system into this board. Now to power it on, I'm going to use a USB power cable. Okay. Now my Raspberry Pi board is powering up. It's going to take some time to boot the Raspberry Pi and get connected with my Wi-Fi automatically. Again guys, if you don't know how to set up the Raspberry Pi like this, that is going to start up and automatically connect to a Wi-Fi network, then I will highly recommend you to watch my dedicated playlist about the Raspberry Pi board. Okay, now you need to get the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. To do that, you can log in to your router admin panel. Let me log in to mine. So my router default gateway is 192.168.0.1. Then I am going to log in to my router admin panel. Okay. Now from here, I'm going to DHCP and DHCP client. And here you can see there is a device named Pi server. This is the MAC address and this is the IP address. So my Raspberry Pi board get this IP address 192.168.0.102. Now using this IP address, I'm going to take access of my Raspberry Pi using the SSH. So let me minimize the browser. And from here, I'm going to click on start and search for terminal. Okay. Then I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi. Then here I am going to type SSH pi at the rate 192.168.0.102. Then I am going to press enter. Then type PS. Then I need to give the password of my Raspberry Pi. Here I am going to type my password. Okay. Now here you can see I got SSH access into my Raspberry Pi. So first of all what you need to do, you have to update the Raspberry Pi board packages. So type here sudo apt update. Now this command is going to update all the Raspberry Pi packages. Okay, now to create a website on this Raspberry Pi, we are going to take use of the Apache web server. To install this Apache web server, type this command sudo apt install apache2. Then press enter. Now this command is going to install the Apache2 web server on your Raspberry Pi. Okay, now the Apache web server has been installed on our Raspberry Pi. Now to start this web server, type this command sudo service apache2 start. Now this command is going to start the Apache 2 web server. Okay, now we have to put our HTML files or web application files into this Apache web server HTML folder. For this we have to go to cd slash var slash www slash html. So this is the default path of Apache web server. Now in this HTML folder we need to put the HTML files of our web application or the website. So for this I am going to open up my browser and go to my github account. Now into this github profile, I have a test website or web application which I created for my student to practice bug bounty hunting. This repository, takeover.github.io. So now I am going to clone all of this file into that HTML folder so that my Raspberry Pi can host this website. Let me show you the demo of this website. If I go to my settings and pages, and if I visit to this URL, so this is the website. Now I'm going to host this website into my Raspberry Pi. So for this, I'm going to go to code and copy this repository from here. Then get back to my Raspberry Pi terminal. And first of all, we need to set up the Git software for this. To install it, type this sudo apt install git. Now this command is going to install the git on our Raspberry Pi. You can see git is already installed in this Raspberry Pi. Now we are going to clone that repository. And for this we are going to type here sudo git clone. Then I will paste the github repository URL. Then press enter. 
Now this command going to clone that GitHub repository in this Raspberry Pi board. If I type here ls, here you can see here we have a folder called takeover.github.io. Now we are going to change our directory to that folder. So here I am going to type cd takeover github.io and now we are going to copy all of these files into this html folder or directory one directory back so here i'm going to type sudo cp dash r then star then space then we are going to type dot dot slash that means copy all of this file into one directory back that means this html folder if i press enter you can see every file has been copied now if i go back to my html directory one directory back and type here ls here you can see we have all the files into this html folder now we need to restart our apache web server for this we are going to type here sudo service apache2 restart then press enter now if i open my browser and visit to my raspberry pi ip address which is 192.168.0.102 and if i press enter now here you can see i have hosted this web server into this raspberry pi board using this ip address now this web application is only accessible using my own network or my local network. Now we have to set up port forwarding on our router so that we can set the public IP address to this web server. So again, I'm going to log into my router admin panel. So here I'm going to type 192.168.0.1. So this is my router admin panel. Now from here, I'll click on this forwarding option, then click on virtual server. Then I'm going to click here, add new. And here I need to type the service port for an web application. The default port is 80. And here I'm going to type the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. So here I'm going to type 192.168.0.102. And for the internal port, also I'm going to type here 80. And from the protocol, I'm going to set up TCP. And his status should be enabled. Then click on save. Now any request come to this 80 port will forward to this Raspberry Pi IP address. Then I'm going to set the port triggering. So for this, I'm going to click on port triggering, then click on add new. Then here I'm going to type 80 for the port and for the trigger protocol, I'm going to set TCP and the open port will be 80. So if anyone visit my public IP address, it can trigger to 80 port and which is going to forward to this Raspberry Pi IP. Then from the open protocol, I'm going to select TCP and status enable. Then you have to click on save. Okay. Now the port forwarding is enabled to my router. Now let's check this 80 port is accessible from the internet or not. So for this, I'm going to take use of, can you see me this website? So take another tab and type here, can you see me? Then go to this first website, can you see me.org. And here you need to type port 80 because we forward this port 80 on my public IP address. Then if I click on check port and now here you can see this is a success. And it's showing I can see your service on my this public IP address on this port number. So that means my port forwarding working very well. Now, if anyone visit my public IP address, let's copy it from here. And if I visit my public IP address, here you can see now I can access this web application or website from this public IP address. So like this, you can easily host any web application or website on your Raspberry Pi and can forward it over the internet so that anyone can from the internet access your web application or website. So guys, that's all for today. I hope you like this video. If you really like this video and enjoy this video, then please give it a big thumbs up and share this video with your friends. And guys, if you need to this channel, then please do subscribe to this YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get all the latest upcoming video tutorial notification. I'm Mehdi Shakil, you're watching Hashtag Tutorial and I'm signing out.